you, 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 you American Christians, I'm talking to you, I'm a Christian, I'm an American, a Native American, I was born in America, you know, I get to have my nativity somewhere, right? I'm not an Aboriginal, but I am a Native born American. So I'm a Christian, I'm an American, and I'm talking to you, my countrymen who are Christians, especially those of you who have uh, made it your business on Facebook to uh, promote and promulgate this uh, anti-Muslim propaganda. Now, I don't agree with um, Islam. There's some good things in it. Uh, there's some things I, I can't agree with. I'm a Christian. I believe Jesus Christ is God, is God in the flesh, okay? So uh, to those of you who are saying that, that I'm uh, drinking the Muslim Kool-Aid, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not drinking anyone's Kool-Aid. In fact, it's you. Uh, promulgators of anti-Muslim uh, propaganda on the internet who are drinking the Kool-Aid because do you understand the context in which this is occurring? No, I'm not whitewashing Islam. No, I'm not whitewashing all Muslims. They are billions and billions of people. Uh, they've got bad people. They've got good people. Just like everyone else, they need the gospel. We, as Christians, have been commissioned to give the gospel to whom? To all creatures. That's our commandment. That's our commission, isn't it? Our commission from the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet the apostles never approached people, even pagans, with many, many, many gods. Even Paul in Acts 17 uh, at Mars Hill at the Areopagus did not approach uh, Christians with the level of, uh, excuse me, pagans, uh, in this case the Greeks, with the level of disdain, the level of um, uh, abuse with which uh, I don't even know if you're approaching Muslims but the, but the way that you treat Islam and these people's beliefs in fact many of their beliefs are in common with us including that Jesus Christ was the Messiah okay of the Jews including monotheism you know there are many things that are in common do they need the gospel yes but what I'm getting down to here is there's no one I'm not even going to repeat the things uh, that are being said verbatim, but there's no one who uh, is going to hear the gospel when you walk up to them and you utterly trash literally everything they've believed in their entire life. And then, Oh, by the way, I'm here to tell you about Jesus Christ. After, after I've taken everything that you uh, have, have understood to be true and believed and understood to be holy in your life and smeared it with pig's blood, all right, and urine, all right, let me just, let me just hint at and allude at what at some of the things that are being said about uh, these people. These are people. These are people. And a lot of the things that you find in the Quran, a lot of the things that they believed through uh, the teachings of the Prophet of Islam, are actually found in the Bible, okay? So the thing isn't entirely a lie. You know, there are Bible stories there, and there are sources there that are uh, drawn from biblical sources. And, and Muhammad, in some cases, himself admits that he's drawing from uh, Christian tradition, Christian history, and Jewish and Christian scriptures, including the Psalms, the Zaburi of King uh, David, the prophet King David. So you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, okay? You can. Obviously you can. You're doing it, right? But that is not how you lead people to the gospel. But I get it. I get it. That's not what you're trying to do. Is it? You're not trying to lead uh, people to the gospel. Well, what is it that you're trying to do? Are you trying to defend the Christians in Muslim countries, like the biggest Muslim country in the, in the world? Do you know what that is? You probably don't. You probably think it's in the Middle East. Well, guess what? The biggest, uh, by population, Muslim country in the world is Indonesia. Indonesia. That's right, Indonesia. Most uh, Muslims in the world are not, in fact, Ishmaelites, physically anyway, they're, uh, uh, except to the degree that, that uh, Islam is, in a sense, uh, you could say Ishmaelitic Judaism, then they are spiritual Ishmaelites, but in terms of being descended from Ishmael, being descended from Ishmael, they are the, min the, the, the Arabs, the descendants of Ishmael are the minorities in the Muslim world. But in reality, the Christians who are living in Indonesia, or in the Middle East, 
or in Syria or in Iraq, even though we've decimated many of these places where they were living relative to what they're experiencing now, living at peace. Okay, I'm not saying things were great. There was always persecution. There were always problems. But these people in Syria, these Christian people in Egypt, the Copts, okay, the Orthodox, a few Protestants in Iraq and Syria and Egypt were doing a lot better before we started by we, I mean Washington. Demonic, evil, satanic Washington started doing what? Destabilizing their countries, bringing death, destruction, sending ISIS, training Al-Qaeda. Oh, you don't believe that that's real. Well, guess what? Wake up and smell the coffee. It's real. It's real. Millions of people have suffered. Millions of people have died. And you people who are promulgating this propaganda and, and speaking these vile things about people who, who need the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, something tells me maybe I'm wrong, but something tells me that if you were standing in the streets of Cairo, if you were in uh, uh, Jakarta, Indonesia, okay, if you were in Syria, if you were in Iraq, I don't think you'd be so bold as you are. Do you realize, do you realize the effect, the effect that your words are having on Christians just trying to live in those countries? As you throw your weight around on Facebook, well, wow, here's another video of a Muslim beating up a goat. Uh, let me tell you something, that man beating up the goat on the video you're sharing, he's crazy. Nine out of, you know, 99,000 out of 100,000, uh, 99,999 out of 100,000 Muslims would say that too. This man is crazy, he's drunk, or he's a demoniac, or some combination of, of those three, okay? They are not crazy people. <laughs> They're not crazy people. We've driven a lot of them crazy, and they, yes, they have their radicals, and we've tipped the scale in favor of their radicals, again, by we, I mean Washington, demonic satanic Washington whom Christians whom Christians have allowed to run crazy for decades on end not only destroying uh, people in Muslim countries but since 1973 killing over 60 million of our own children that God has commissioned us to defend and we think we want to uh, pick a fight with the billions and billions of of Muslims who, according to their knowledge of God, many of them, some of them are nominal, just like people say, oh yeah, I'm Christian. Uh, but there are many, many millions and millions and millions of sincere, de devout Muslims. Do you really want to push them further into radicalism? Guess what happens? Those Christians who are trying to live in Jakarta, okay, in the Middle East, surrounded by Muslims, in some cases, uh, Iraq and Syria, in, in, in places where uh, they've been surviving since the birth of Islam, since the since Pentecost, when they came back from, from hearing the gospel preached in all languages and the name of God spoken in all languages, meaning the people speaking uh, Arabic, by the way, her, as the book of Acts recounts, heard the name Allah, Allah. That's right. Allah, the Christians in Arabic-speaking countries, by the way, worship God, Allah, as the Father of Jesus Christ. And you are making their lives, which are already a living hell, because of the fact that we've allowed Washington to do what it's done over the past 30 years, especially the past 15 years, since September 11th. I'm talking 16, 17 years now. But especially since then, their lives have been horrible. And by uh, promulgating this propaganda that you wouldn't dare, I know, let me just talk the truth, you wouldn't dare, you wouldn't dare uh, blaspheme uh, uh, Islam on the streets of Cairo. That would be an interesting ministry. Number one, you wouldn't uh, lead anyone to the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Number two, that ministry would last about five minutes. <laughs> uh, you know, if, if you're so bold, if you're so brave, go do it. Go do it. But by doing this publicly, you are endangering the lives of Christians, 
damaging the gospel. And in reality, under these circumstances, do you really, do you really want, do you really want, ask yourself, do you really want to pick a fight, more fights, with Muslim people? Because there's a good possibility the Lord Jesus Christ could side with them. That's right. Jesus Christ could side with them and help them destroy us. He's already doing it because they're obeying him demographically. They're having children, and we Christians, by and large, are not reproducing ourselves. We're using contraception. Uh, we're doing other things. We are not reproducing ourselves. And so already they're going to win. It doesn't matter if their doctrine is right. It doesn't matter if they're, if they're speaking the truth or not. Just by being obedient to that commandment of God, be fruitful and multiply, they are paradoxically more children of Abraham than are we. Because these are very basic, basic things. Be fruitful and multiply. Uh, and I'm not even going to get into the Burkini uh, controversy. I mean, I, it's, it, I mean, I can't even bear it, all right? I mean, our own great-grandmothers would be disgusted Bikini Island, the atomic bomb. Go research it. Google it. Bikini Island and the atomic bomb. Uh, bomb. That connection with, with death, uh, mass uh, destruction and death, and the uncovering of our women and their nakedness. And now, supposedly, uh, the way to defend Western culture is to stop um, Muslim women from covering their bodies at the beach. Because it, our Western culture means uh, displaying your wife, your sister, uh, your daughter's nakedness at the beach, and that's Western culture. That's disgusting. Our great-grandmothers, our great-grandfathers are rolling over in their graves. After hundreds of years of Western culture, with all its flaws, with all its problems, now Western culture apparently is defined by the sexual revolution. Well, I'm telling you, Jesus is going to side with these people if we don't shape up. He's not going to defend us. Not only is he not going to defend us, he's going to deliver us and all our crap into their hands. I mean, all our things, all the shit, all the stuff that we decided was more important than defending the law of God. Because this is what it comes down to, okay? When Christians refuse to defend the law of God, to enforce the law of God, we've got, in the United States of America alone, we've got 50 states, 50 to a certain degree sovereign bailiwicks we could have tried in one out of 50 states, okay? Couldn't we have tried in even one over the past 40, what is it, 44 years now? <laughs> Couldn't we have tried to abolish abortion? No, instead uh, we've legalized sodomy and we just take it. We roll over and take it from the secularists and people like Randall Terry and other pro-lifers who used to challenge those secularists have been beat down just like a man in prison who gets sodomized and made the bitch mm -hmm, mm -hmm, of someone in prison. And then he walks around sagging and now you know whose bitch he is, you see. That's who Randall Terry represents. All the pro-lifers who tried to stop the secularists from killing babies and now they got fucked in the ass, okay? They got fucked in the ass. Let me not mince words. Sorry if your ears can't bear to hear it. They got made the bitch of the secularists who run Washington, D.C., to the point that their candidate, oh, great Donald Trump, ha has got to uh, uh, make peace with, with uh, sodomites, uh, people who uh, sodomize one another and abuse one another's uh, rear ends in order to even have a chance at winning the election, all right? So they're so beholden to uh, abortion and sodomy that now uh, the only thing they can do is throw pot shots at, at the Muslims in Muslim countries and whine and bitch about them because in reality they're little gimps. You know, they're enslaved to uh, the secularists who are actually running the show here in the USA and have made the Christian, uh, the Christ so-called Christians, the fake Christians, the evangelicals, they're little bitches. And now the evangelicals, under the protection of those secularists, are going to walk around and throw uh, and lob um, uh, missiles at, the, uh, at, at Islam and at Muslims, many of whom are sincere people. 
all right? Sincere people trying to worship God to the degree that they know how, all right? I'm not whitewashing them, okay? Many of them wouldn't whitewash it. In fact, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, kills a, a thousand Muslims <laughs> for every uh, Christian they've killed. And in fact, ISIS and Al-Qaeda has been linked to and connected to, bare minimum, the fact that our government has uh, removed the constraints like Saddam Hussein, like Muammar Gaddafi, like Bashar al-Assad, like uh, uh, Syrian uh, President uh, Mubarak. We removed the constraints at minimum, at minimum, that were keeping things like uh, Al-Qaeda and ISIS from growing. And we brought death and destruction on Muslims, and it has affected Christians and other minorities in those countries horrifically. And now after allowing Washington to kill 60 million children and allowing that uh, death and perversion to spread all through the globe, now we want to pick on the Muslims. Well, guess what? The Lord Jesus Christ is watching. He's watching. He's watching you. He's watching. And if he doesn't kill us all by hook or by crook, it'll be a miracle and it'll be merciful. It's time to repent and restore God's law before God kills all of us. And take the, the beam out of our own eyes before we pick at the, the little specks in the eyes of those Muslims.